Nice. Dude, let's go. Oh my goodness. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Untamed Outdoors. And today I am very excited to be making this video. This is the two year follow up on my kayak, the Ascend 133X. So before I get into this video, I want to let you know we did a one year buyer's review on this kayak. That video has done extremely well and we're actually going to be basing this video off of that one. So we're going to be addressing a lot of the same points. We're going to be following up on a lot of the points that we made uh, and seeing how the boat has held up after a whole nother year. Um, I have owned this boat for two years. Uh, this coming February 2024 will be two years. As a whole, I am going to say I had a very positive experience. And in this video, we're going to be going over everything that I've added to this kayak, how it's held up two years. So, you know, the trolling motor, the Yetis, the fish finders, the black packs, whatever it may be, after two whole years. So we talked about this stuff one year in, and we'll talk about it two years in, how it's held up, and then all the new mods as well. So we'll be talking about all of those. We're going to be readdressing some of the pros and cons that I've talked about, if it's held up well, if it hasn't held up well, how I feel about the pros and cons that I made. And then we're going to be getting into the future of this kayak. So I have some news to share with you guys in regards to this kayak. We'll get into it in a little bit as to what actually happened to this kayak and what's going to be happening in the future. Uh, we'll get into that later on in the video. But this is my two-year barrage going on it. So we're going to get started over here. Uh, so if you guys like what you see, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps us out a lot to fund these videos. Uh, so let's just get right into it. So right over here, this is the front area of the kayak. So I have these Yak Power LED strips, red and green strips. If you can't see them, I'm sorry. And I'm using this cool face tracker thing that I got. If it's cool, we'll keep using it. Yak Power LED lights. So overall, these things have been absolutely excellent. I haven't had a single problem with them. They're bright. They do get a little warm, but it's fine. Not anything hot or anything like that, but these things have been really nice. They've been really nice to keep my boat legal. Now we have this Motor Guide XI3. So the Motor Guide XI3 has been my favorite part of this kayak and it's been the real meat and potatoes of this kayak, really. We talked about it as a bare unit last year. This was the XI3 just bare and it's been a great motor after another year. I've had no problems with it. And we've added the Pinpoint GPS, which it's been an absolute game changer for me. The Pinpoint GPS has been a night and day addition. It's probably my favorite mod that I've done. It's a little pricey, I will admit. It's around 500 bucks. But if you're using your kayak like I've used it, it's 100% worth it. Um, and we've also added two smaller things, the Katana Prop I've added. The Katana Prop's been great. It's a cheap mod that you can do that actually helps out quite a bit. It just cuts through the vegetation. It doesn't get wrapped up in the motor. And then over here, I don't know if you can see it, but I added an Eliminator Prop Nut, an Aluminum Eliminator Prop Nut. Didn't help too, too much, but it was 10 bucks, so whatever. Uh, so heading right over here. The Yeti Go Box 30, uh, this thing, I haven't had a ton of experience with it yet, ton of time with it yet, but I will say my storage solutions have been met. I am very happy with how the storage has held up on this thing for a while now. I, I like having all this extra room, keeping stuff away from the front of the boat, and just letting all the extra add-ons and stuff be right here, which I really like. Right here is the Yak Attack Leverage Landing Net. So when I made the video on this back in, I think, February of 2023, uh, I was a little concerned how much I would use this thing. And I can say probably 60 to 70% of the fish that we caught in the entirety of the 2023 fishing season were used with this net. So I'm going to say this net was worth every penny. I am really happy with the amount of use I've gotten out of this net. And I'm really looking forward to whatever build it's on next. A little, little small hint there. I'm looking forward to whatever we're, we do next with this boat or any other boats. Over here is the Field and Stream Angler CF Kayak Paddle in the front over there. I like that thing quite a bit. It's pretty light, it's nice and long. Uh, I've had it for three years now and I love it. It's held up very well. So not a whole lot to talk about there, it's just a paddle. But going into the next part here, this is actually the newest mod that we did. This is the Yak Attack Track Pack Evergreen. So this thing, I, again, I haven't really had much time with it yet, but this is going to be a really nice storage item here. we got plenty of storage options on this kayak now, so there's no need to have extra clutter over here. It's all going to be in its organized boxes. Uh, it may look a little like cluttered to, to some people, but to me, I, I love it like this. It gives me just enough room to keep everything freed up nice and empty. And then we're going to get into the hull here. So the hull, I have this 24 amp hour, and I'm sorry if you can't see it. I'm still experimenting with this camera. 
24 amp hour lithium ion battery. This is a Life PO4 one. Love this thing. I have not brought it down past about 65, 70%. So there's plenty of power in this thing to run anything you want to do for fish finders and lighting and GoPros, whatever you want to do. This can do it no problem. Uh, in here, I also have the Noco Genius Gen 5 X2, and that thing is a dual plug and play battery charger. So this, this battery never leaves my hull, uh, and I really love it because I don't have to worry about this battery. This battery doesn't even need to be touched. I can leave it out there, especially during the winter. I can just plug it in. It's got thermal control, so it'll, it won't damage the battery. If it gets too cold, it'll compensate for the thermal change. Leave it in there full time, and then if I need faster charging out of my big battery, I can just plug it right in from out there. We have a plug over there. So I love that thing. It was one of the most useful mods that we've done for sure. But yeah, very, very happy. So my next item that I want to talk about is the Yak Power LED lights, the button lights. So I said in the one year buyer's review that I was not a big fan of these. And I'm gonna say with 100% certainty that I am definitely not a big fan of them. I love Yak Power. I have a lot of stuff here from Yak Power and everything has been pretty positive, I can say, besides one item and this guy. Um, but I can say as a whole that I did not have a great experience with these button lights. I'm not really sure what happened, but all these button lights have, been, have had to be replaced multiple times. So this thing is on right now. And I don't have power to this one anymore. That one still works fine. This one is a little, it, it's starting to go out a little bit and this one is completely out. It's flickering a little bit. I have to hit them multiple times to get it to turn on. If I ever do another kayak build, I don't think I'm gonna add those because they just, they didn't really work for me. Um, the Yak Power system came with the Ascend 133X when I bought it. No problems with that whatsoever. I like it still, it still works the way it should. So no real problems there. The seat has been fine. I have had no real problems with the seat either. I mean, it's just the Ascend seat. It has been pretty comfortable, I, I will say so. No problems there. And then this is one of the new mods that I did right here. So this is the Minkota Power Center. This is the box for it. And inside is actually a new battery. So the new battery is a 100 amp hour lithium ion Life PO4. Uh, this is by the Redodo brand and I absolutely love it. Having, the, having less weight back here has been an amazing thing. We actually lost weight compared to the one year buyer's review with all the stuff that was on there in the one year buyer's review and all the stuff that's on here now, it's actually less weight, or maybe it's close, but it's less weight now because we dropped about 15, 20 pounds with the new battery. Because the lead acid ones, they're very heavy. And this lithium ion one, it's been flawless. So we're gonna get to the Black Pack Pro. So the Black Pack Pro, I absolutely love this thing. This thing has been a staple on this kayak for a long time. I can say it's been used pretty extremely in the last couple of months. I'm very, very happy with this thing. Uh, high quality, no signs of it warping, no signs of, of plastic starting to fade. This is still a really high quality made in the USA product and I am thrilled that I bought it. Coming over here is, I have a nice little custom flag over here. Uh, I added this just for safety while I'm traveling with the kayak. Uh, I really like that. And then over here, this is the Yak Attack flag, Yak Attack Vizi Carbon Pro. Originally, I made a video on the Yak Power Lightning Rod. The Yak Power Lightning Rod was the worst thing I ever put on this kayak. Again, I'm not bashing Yak Power. I like that. I like the brand a lot. I have a lot of things by Yak Power that I enjoy. But the one thing that didn't do well was the lightning rod. I bought the lightning rod in February of 2023, right around there. So when I bought the Yak Power lightning rod, it worked okay in the beginning. I didn't have any major problems with it. But right off the bat, I immediately started having problems with it. So within the first trip out, the light already stopped working on it. I had to get in contact with their customer service. Thankfully, the customer service was great. And they sent me a new one. And right out of the box, the new one did not work either. So I did not have a very experience with the Yak Power Lightning Rod. Thankfully, the Yak Attack VisiCarbon Pro has been flawless. I haven't had any real problems with this thing. Uh, it's great, and I kind of like that it's AA battery power. It gives me one less cord to run, one less thing to have on the Yak Power system and to kill the battery a little bit faster. Uh, AA powered, and I'm still on the original set of AA batteries that came in the box. So clearly it lasts a long time. And again, the Yak Power, the Yak Attack one has been so much better. I have not had a single problem with this thing. So now that we've gone through all of the mods that I did, how, how they've all been holding up, some really good, some not so good. And now we're gonna be getting into some of the pros and cons that I talked about in the one year buyer's review. I'm just gonna readdress those. And then after I finish, I'm gonna talk about a new problem that's happened in the future of this kayak. 
So some of the pros I mentioned was the size. So the size, it's extremely stable on the water. I haven't had any like in, I have not felt unstable on this boat. It's been very sturdy. I can move around. I have free reign to kind of move around. I can go right up here if I want to. So I have a lot of stability on this boat. And that includes having, you know, the batteries that all the weight on this thing, it hasn't really affected my stability even a little bit. Uh, so I can say that I'm very happy with the stability. The next mod that I like is the upgradability on this thing. So this thing is designed from the factory. It's very bare from the factory. You don't get very much. You get a yak power system, but that's pretty much it. You can do whatever you want to this boat. So clearly this boat has been very modified. So many of you have loved our build series on this Ascend 133X, and I just want to thank you for all of the support we got on that build series. That is a very iconic group of videos for this channel. I think it put our channel on the map for sure. But this, this kayak has been tricked out. I have a ton of different stuff on this thing and it gives you freedom to do whatever you want. People have added gas motors back there. I'm kind of 50-50 on the gas motor take. Some people do it really well. Some people I feel, you know, do it and they come into problems and then blame the kayak. So I'm not really sure how I feel about it, but overall it's, it's, it's okay doing a gas motor. So a lot of the pros on, on this guy are pretty bare bones. I do like having the extra trolling motor option. So if I did want to do a rear trolling motor, I could do it. I don't really love the idea of a rear trolling motor on this because you got to reach so far behind just to, just to use it. This front one has been so much better. I can make so many micro adjustments on this thing and it does the adjustments for me now for the most part. So I, I love having the front one, but I'm going to get a little more into the cons. So the cons, a lot of them that I mentioned were the size, the weight, and the most important one was the hull flex. Uh, the hull flex is a growing issue with these Ascend 133Xs. I've definitely, since the one year barrage review, I've definitely seen a massive uptick in the amount of people having hull flex issues or cracking issues, which is another big thing I want to get into in a minute. So the hull flex part can be corrected. It, it, if it's caught very early, I think it can very easily be corrected. So we just talked about this in another video and I'll leave it in a card up top right now. In that video, we talked about some ways you can correct hole flex if you catch it early. So if you catch the hole flex early, you can easily put, this is what I would do. You can go get a kickball off of Amazon. I would get a two pack of kickballs. You can get them off of Amazon and you can put them in these two spots. So right where your feet rest, right where your feet rest, what you can do is you can take a deflated kickball. You can put it right where you want to put it and you can, def and you can inflate it. And what that does is it creates a non-permanent conforming support. So you can put support wherever you need to and it won't, it won't affect the kayak. So you can, put, you can put a yoga block in here. The yoga blocks are, they're a fine option, but the problem is you can't get them to fully sit right because the hull is just so many different shapes. The kickball, however, will conform to those shapes. So it'll give you the support that you need. You can still take it out. And the best part is, is it'll support this whole area. So one of the massive problems that I have seen on, on this ascent, and it's a growing issue for sure, has been cracking. So the cracking has happened right around here on a lot of the new Ascend 133Xs. So I'm not 100% sure how that's happening. It could be related to the, to the plastic just being a thinner plastic and the lack of support that you get over here. Um, but that is definitely a problem that's happening. And I feel the best way that you can control that is putting support over there. And when it comes to the rear tank well, they're having problems as well, because what happens is, right where the battery sits, it's making kind of this formation with hull flex. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see it too, too well, but the middle tank well, kind of where the black pack sits, the middle tank well is very drooped down. Um, and that's starting to be a growing problem as well. And you could put another kickball in there. You could very easily put a kickball underneath the hull and inflate it. But the problem with the kickball in the tank well is the kickball is much more of a precise, it's smaller. So you're going to get this giant bulge sticking out of the middle of the tank well. You can do that, but I think there's a better way to do it. And that's a lawnmower inner tube, a small lawnmower inner tube. What you can do is the same way you did the kickball. You can deflate it. You can stuff the, the tire inner tube where you need it to go. You can very easily take a valve stem extension. You can hook it up to your small compressor and inflate the inner tube inside the tank well. Because at least on my kayak, there's no support underneath this black pack right now. There's no foam blocks, there's no nothing. It's just plastic. So what that inner tube will allow you to do is it'll give you more of a broad 
support. So it'll give you a wider range of support. It'll support this whole tank well as opposed to just the middle of the tank well. And I think that's a great option. So if you want to go that route, you absolutely can go that route. So I've talked a lot about this kayak on our channel, ranging from the build series to mods you should do to follow-ups. And when I did the one year buyer's review, I was very, very happy with this kayak. I was thrilled. I love this thing. It was a great boat during that one year buyer's review. However, after doing a lot of research on this Ascend within the last year since that review, I feel like I have a harder time recommending this boat for two main reasons. Uh, one is the hull. The hull is just not the quality that you would expect it to be. Uh, the plastic is a lot thinner. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a thousand dollar boat. So you're going to get what you pay for for a thousand dollars. In the kayak world, if you're going for top of the line kayaks, a thousand dollars just doesn't really do it. Um, you can, you can get away with it, no problem. But if you're really looking to do what I'm doing to a kayak, in hindsight, if I had to do this all over again, I probably would have done it on a different platform. There has been a massive, like I just said, a massive rise of people having complaints related to cracking and hull flex. And at the end of the day, that's just not something that you wanna have to deal with. Especially because if it does crack, you know, Bass Pro has been very accommodating from what I can see. They've been very accommodating with their kayaks. And I'm not sponsored to say any of this stuff, by the way. Bass Pro has been very accommodating for the most part from what I can tell. Um, but the problem is, is yes, they are accommodating, but the issue is, is you have to re-rig everything onto a new boat. You have to re-register the kayak. And that's just a tedious process that many people don't want to deal with, myself included. And I'm very, I'm very upset to announce that my Ascend has developed that crack. And it was, I actually found out today that it happened and I didn't want this review to be plagued by just that. I wanted to give very honest feedback about it, but sadly it has happened. And we're going to get into that actually right now. So I just noticed it this morning, but, and I'll give you a better angle of it as I'm talking here, but right here, there is a crack going through the hull. So right here, there is a crack going through the hull. And I shined a light on it. The light went straight through into the inside of the hull. Um, I'm, I'm very disappointed that that happened. This kayak has been amazing for me overall. So many thousands of you have enjoyed watching this build series. And I, Pete and I really enjoyed making it. Um, but unfortunately, this happened. And I think, unfortunately, it's time to go another direction. So with that being said, the SN 133X will not be seeing water on this channel again. Uh, unfortunately, with that cracking happening, I could repair it, but unfortunately, I just, I, I think it's time to go another direction. So, with that being said, as much as I have loved this boat and I have enjoyed it, I have a harder time recommending it because of all of the cracking issues that have happened on these kayaks from so many different owners. There's a Facebook group called the Ascend 133X owners that have really been talking nonstop about this problem because so many people are having it. And I'm going to say, as glowing as my recommendation was last year, I have a harder time recommending it now, um, which is definitely a shame because I really liked this kayak a lot. We did so much to this boat, like I said. So many hundreds of thousands of you have enjoyed watching this build series. And I just wanna say thank you for that. But unfortunately, I think it's time for the Ascend 133X to be retired on this channel. Okay, so now that I just mentioned that this Ascend 133X has unfortunately developed a crack, I think Pete and I have both discussed, we think it's time for a new boat. Um, we think it's time to get a new kayak. I'm not going to be going the bass boat route. I know some of you have commented about potentially me getting a bass boat. That's not what I want to do. I love kayak fishing. Kayak fishing has always been what I do and what I enjoy. So I am currently considering two different kayaks. So for the sake of it being a surprise when the video comes out, I am actually not going to say the names of them, but I am considering two very high-end kayaks. I'm thinking about my options right now, but if you guys have a suggestion of what kayak I should get for the channel, definitely leave a comment down below. Uh, I don't make any promises as to what I'm going to be getting, but I do have two that I really am considering. But if you have any suggestions, definitely leave them down below. I am looking for a definite upgrade over the Ascend that can still hold all my gear while still being kayak, obviously. So if you guys want to leave a suggestion, definitely leave it down below. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for my two year follow up on the Ascend 133X. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Like I said, it's free and it helps out a lot. 
Thank you for all the support that we received on the Ascend 130X build series this last two years. Very sad to hear it come to an end with that cracking problem, but we're looking forward to all new things coming soon. Uh, there's gonna be a ton of new stuff coming to the channel now. I did not wake up this morning expecting that to happen, but that's what we're gonna be doing now. And I'm really excited for that. So definitely stay tuned. And if you have any concerns, any comments you wanna leave, definitely leave them down below. And we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.